What's going on everyone, Rich Lee here, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the future of the Arsenal squad. Now, just like the other future of videos that I've been doing, I haven't used player training whatsoever for the purposes of this video. The player growth is all natural, I've simmed forward five seasons, and I have of course been signing players throughout the five years, so there will be a few new faces in the squad. And if you're enjoying these future of videos, make sure you smash that like button. And if you're new around here, please do subscribe whilst you're at it as well. I'm posting career mode content most days, so if you enjoy career mode, subscribe to the channel and make sure that you don't miss any of my future videos. Also, you'll find a poll in the top right hand corner of your screen and you can vote for the next team that I do in this future of series. Anyway though, let's get into the squad report and let's take a look at the future of the Arsenal squad. First of all then we've got Bernd Leno. He was brought into the club to replace Petr Cech when he retired. All of his goalkeeping stats are in the 80s. He's also got 84 reactions, made 60 appearances in this fifth season and got a 6.9 average rating. Has potential of 89 so unfortunately didn't quite reach that but still a very good goalkeeper and definitely well worth investing in. Thomas Sokolik is the Petr Cech regen, 80 rated at the age of 20, exciting prospect and he looks pretty brilliant already to be honest, 94 kicking at the age of 20 which is just absolutely insane. His positioning is weak but other than that looks like a truly exceptional goalkeeper. Matt Macy is 60 rated now at the age of 26, has potential of 64, so wasn't able to reach that, but he did go up by 8 ratings. His stats are still fairly poor to be honest, but yeah, there you go, 60 rated at the age of 26. Ospina is 80 rated at the age of 32, starts out as a 79 rating I believe and went up to an 80, so that's not too bad, and he's an okay keeper. Chesney is also an 80 rating, again I believe he starts out as a 79, went up to an 80 and he's pretty solid. Bellerin got to his full potential of 87 and as you can see there he's got 99 pace. Absolutely phenomenal right back, well worth signing in any career mode. 51 appearances with a 7.0 average rating. Tafari Moore has potential of 75. Only got to a 73, but he did go up by 10 ratings, so that's not too bad at all. And he has some pretty decent stats on him. Callum Chambers is 80 rated now at the age of 26. Has potential of 82, so again, not quite hitting his potential, but some solid stats there. And he would be a very good right back to use in the game. Carl Jenkinson is 77 rated at the age of 29. Has potential of 76, so he's able to go beyond that, and that is very good to see. Mustafi got up to his full potential of 88, has 90 jumping, 91 stand tackling, 89 slide tackle and looks like a very solid centre back. Whilst Timothy Colo, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that but anyway let's just refer to him as Colo, signed him from Sevilla in the first season, 48 appearances, 6.9 average rating and some of his stats are just absolutely insane, just look at that. 91 stand tackle, 93 slide tackle, has potential of 86 so he went well beyond that and looks absolutely exceptional. Samuel Umtiti was able to hit his full potential of 87, has some brilliant stats and got a 6.8 average from 36 appearances. Whilst Rob Holden only got to a 75 rating, has potential of 79 but he did go up by 8 ratings so that's not too bad and he looks alright to be honest. Julio Pleguazalo has potential of 74, only got up to a 72 but he was only ever going to be a fringe player so you can't really expect everyone to reach their full potential and he's only 2 off anyway and he's still 24 years old so got some growth left in him and if I was to do this for a few more seasons I'm sure he'd hit his full potential and of course if you were using player training then he could easily get beyond that. Anyway though, some pretty solid stats there, made two appearances in the pre-season tournament and got a 7.7 .7 average rating. Gabriel is 84 rated now at the age of 30, has potential of 83 so he's able to go beyond that and he's got 88 tackling which is absolutely insane and some very nice physicals as well. Christian Bielik has potential of 78. Only got up to a 71, but he did go up by 10 ratings, so that's not too bad at all. And then we've got the Alaba pregen, Philip Ilsanka. You can tell he's the Alaba pregen because I found him at Bayern Munich, and as you can see there, he's Austrian, 
with the exact same positioning as Alaba. And he just looks absolutely brilliant, to be honest. Still only 21 years old, 98 acceleration, 89 sprint speed. In fact, all of his physicals are absolutely ridiculous. He's also got 90 ball control, 87 crossing. And if you were to be training him up, he would be absolutely insane. He made 33 appearances, got a 6.8 average, and looks like a very good player. And then we've got Guy Ten Jordan, 78 rated at the age of 20. I'm not too sure whose regen he is, but he's a French left back anyway, and again, looks very good. Kieran Gibbs is on the decline now at the age of 31. Glenn Kamara is 68 rated at the age of 25. Has potential of 72, but he did go up by 10 ratings, and that's not too bad. El Nenny is now 82 rated at the age of 28. Potential of 81, so he was able to get beyond that, and that's very good to see. Coquelin hit his full potential of 84. Can't take free kicks, can't finish, but other than that, has a lot of green stats, and would be a very good CDM to use in the game. Whilst Oxlade Chamberlain got to his full potential as well of 86, some very nice stats there, made 19 appearances, and unfortunately, didn't get any goals or assists and only a 6.4 average rating, which is quite disappointing, to be honest. Usmane Dembele got up to an 88 rating, has potential of 90, but he did go up by 10 ratings and in this fifth season, he scored 10 goals. And as you can see there, he's got some very nice stats. Ainsley Maitland-Niles hit his full potential of 75. If you're doing an Arsenal career mode or a Premier League career mode, then you probably don't really want to sign this player. But if you're doing a Road to Glory series, then I feel that he would be absolutely perfect. Joel Campbell is 82 rated now at the age of 29, and he's on the decline. Cosiello hit a 90 rating, has potential of 87, and went well beyond that. And just look at those stats. Absolutely brilliant player. 39 appearances, 9 goals, 7.0 average rating. Verratti is 92 rated at the age of 28. Again, going well beyond his full potential. Has potential of 90, but 92 rated now. One of the best midfielders in the world. 12 goals in 54 appearances. And just look at those stats. And as well as having 90 rated Cosiello and 92 rated Verratti, we've also got 94 rated Paul Pogba. In the other future of videos that I've been doing, I've quite often seen Arsenal sign Paul Pogba, so I thought, why not? I'll bring him to Arsenal. He's such a fantastic midfielder, and he scored 24 goals in 60 appearances, and also provided 15 assists. What an absolute beast. Granit Xhaka is 87 rated at the age of 28. Didn't really play much in this fifth season, but there you go. Did hit his full potential, and has some very nice stats. Koke is 88 rated at 29, again some very nice stats, and again hitting his full potential. 27 appearances, 6 goals, 6.9 average rating. Whilst Aaron Ramsey is on the decline now, still managed to score 10 goals in 27 appearances with a 7.7 .7 average, which is absolutely brilliant, but yeah, on the decline, and that is very disappointing to see. Zalalem got to an 80 rating, has potential of 84, so not quite reaching that, but he did go up by 13 ratings. Wilshire is 86 rated now at the age of 29. Alex Awobi got to an 83 rating, has potential of 86, so again, unfortunately not quite hitting that, but did go up by 10 ratings, only made 8 appearances in this 5th season, and didn't really do much. Isco is 88 rated at the age of 29, 18 goals in 60 appearances, 7.1 average, and is a very good player. Jeff Rene Adelaide has potential of 78, went up by 12 ratings to hit a 75, so not quite reaching his full potential, but not bad growth, and he looks like a decent player. Daniel Crowley is 77 rated at the age of 23, has potential of 83, but he did go up by 13 ratings. Meza Ozil is on the decline, and he's down to an 86 rating now. Only made 8 appearances in this 5th season, and got 1 goal and 1 assist. John Torrell is 77 rated at the age of 26. Has potential of 78, so again, not quite hitting it, but not far off, and looks okay. Antoine Griezmann, 91 rated at 30, on the decline, and that is very disappointing to see. 
only scored 13 goals in 36 appearances as well. Whilst Lacazette scored just 9 goals in 41 appearances. Had a fantastic couple of seasons after I first signed him, but in the last few seasons he's fallen away a bit and unfortunately he's now on the decline. Asano is 78 rated at the age of 26, has potential of 80, but went up by 9 ratings to get to that 78 rating. Chris Willock is now 73 rated at the age of 23, has potential of 78, but he went up by 17 ratings in 5 seasons, which, with no player training, is just absolutely ridiculous. If you're doing a Road to Glory series, then Chris Willock would be absolutely brilliant. And Tuba Akpon would be very well suited to a Road to Glory series as well. Also has 78 potential, got to a 76, has 99 pace, some pretty nice technical stats as well. Didn't play at all in this fifth season, but as I say, if you're doing a Road to Glory series with, say, a League 1 or League 2 team, maybe even a championship team, then Akpom is definitely well worth investing in. Giroud is on the decline now. He's down to a 73 rated at the age of 34, only made one appearance in the preseason tournament and didn't find the back of the net. Danny Welbeck is 83 rated at the age of 30, no goals or assists in 12 appearances and unfortunately he's now on the decline. Whilst Yaya Sonogo reached his full potential of 75 and has some pretty decent stats there. Finally then we've got Alexi Sanchez, 82 rated at the age of 32, his stats are falling off massively and he made 21 appearances in this 5th season, scoring 2 goals in the process. Time to take a look at what the team was able to accomplish in these 5 seasons now then. And in the 1st season, the board expected Arsenal to win the league, win the FA Cup and reach the Champions League final. They finished 2nd in the league, got knocked out in the 3rd round of the FA Cup and only got to the last 16 of the Champions League. So, weren't able to deliver on any of the expectations. Danny Welbeck was the top goalscorer with 14. Lacazette and Oxlade-Chamberlain got the most assists with 6 apiece. Manchester United won the FA Cup. Spurs won the League Cup. Real Madrid beat Barcelona in the Champions League final. And Manchester United beat West Ham in the Europa League final. Chelsea won the Premier League title. Arsenal came second as I've already said. United came third. City came fourth and West Ham missed out on the top four on goal difference. Whilst in the second season, the board were now expecting Arsenal to win the treble, and once again they failed to deliver. This season, though, they were a bit more successful. They won the Premier League title, they won the FA Cup, they reached the Champions League semi-finals, and Lacazette scored 22 goals. Ozil and Mares got the most assists with eight apiece. Birmingham City won the League Cup, which was quite surprising. Real Madrid once again won the Champions League, beating Bayern Munich 2-1 in the final, and Chelsea beat Borussia Dortmund in the Europa League. The top four consisted of Arsenal as champions, Watford finishing second, Man City in third, and Manchester United in fourth. And in the third season, the board once again expected Arsenal to win the treble, but again, the team wasn't able to deliver. They got knocked out of the quarter-final stage of the Champions League, they lost to Manchester United in the FA Cup final, but they did win the league and they also won the League Cup. Bayern won the Champions League, getting revenge on Real Madrid and beating them 2-1 in the final. Sevilla beat Liverpool in the Europa League. And in terms of the top four in England, it consisted of Arsenal, Spurs, Chelsea and Liverpool. With Swansea City missing out on a place in the Champions League on goal difference. Isco was the best player in the squad in this third season. We signed him for 72 million and he scored 25 goals and got 11 assists. Moving into the fourth season now then, and once again Arsenal failed to win the treble. They got knocked out of the last 16 stage of the Champions League, only reached the fourth round of the FA Cup. They did win the Premier League title for a third season in a row though, and they also won the League Cup once again. Manchester United beat Leicester City 4-0 in the FA Cup final. Real Madrid beat Spurs 3-1 in the Champions League final. And Mainz beat Roma 1-0 in the Europa League. Lacazette was the top goalscorer with 20. Pogba got the most assists with 9. And in terms of the top 4, it consisted of Arsenal, United, Spurs and Watford. With Newcastle finishing in 5th. 
Finally then, we've arrived at the fifth season and Arsenal won their fourth consecutive Premier League title. Liverpool came second, Chelsea third, City fourth and Manchester United missed out on a place in the Champions League as they finished fifth whilst getting relegated were Reading, Swansea and Sunderland. Correa scored the most goals in the Premier League, Oliveira, Barkley and Sterling got the most assists, and Leno and Karius kept the most clean sheets. Manchester United won the Community Shield on penalties, whilst Everton won the FA Cup. With Aguero, Taylor and Barkley scoring the most goals in the FA Cup, Paulson and Barbar getting the most assists, and Robles keeping the most clean sheets. Arsenal were able to win their third consecutive League Cup, beating Chelsea 2-1 in the final. Pogba scored the most goals in the League Cup. He also provided the most assists. Please tell me that they played him in goal and he also kept the most clean sheets. Nope, that was Burnt Leno tied with Walton. And for the first time in five seasons, Real Madrid were unable to reach the Champions League final, as the final was contested by Spurs and Arsenal. What a way for Arsenal to win their first ever Champions League trophy by beating their bitter rival Spurs 2-0 in the final. You couldn't write a better script than that. Di Maria scored the most goals in the Champions League, Mahrez got the most assists, and Neuer, Courtois and Leno kept the most clean sheets. And just like in real life, Sevilla absolutely loved the Europa League in FIFA as well as they beat Bayer Leverkusen 2-1 in the final. With Sarabia scoring the most goals, Brandt getting the most assists, and Sommer keeping the most clean sheets. So I'll finish off the video there. Don't forget to vote in the poll for the next team that I do in this series, and I'll catch you again next time.